Hello everyone and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. We have a 1v1 ranked game for you guys today. I'm going against the Major Yu and I am still a captain. We will be seeing how far we can take it with ranked and I'm playing Lanjot on Punchbowl. Now Lanjot on Punchbowl is always a little bit interesting for me because some of the units like particularly the things like Martyr 2s with Panzer Grand 90 are very expensive and I actually am not taking any here right now which may be a mistake, we'll see, but right now it's just a standard opener into Bravo, a little bit into Echo, and the reason that I liked this game in particular is because it was against either USA or NORAD, we'll see here in just a minute, right now just US, well, units showing, and I particularly enjoy games where you have to play against those because I, I find it comes down to a lot of whether or not my opponent really handles the USA unicorn units very well, so for things, for example, things like the Longbow, the Nighthawk, uh, everything like that, so this game, it was also very different strategies. If you look, Yu has a lot of things. Chaparral, Antos is kind of cheap, but the Cobra, lots of things going into Bravo. It was an exercise in two different strategies as well, and it's a bit of a balance on this map. I think a lot of people really go for the two-pointers very hard, Charlie, Delta, that sort of thing. And if you overcommit, you can get punished in it, as uh, we've recently seen, I think, in a couple of different games. But if you undercommit then your opponent can just take your two-pointer, and it doesn't really matter if you have an edge other places. Even a counter-cap can be very, very deadly. So think about this. If Red gets Bravo, but I get a counter-cap in Delta, I get Cheriton, and I have Echo, he has Foxtrot, you know, I'm getting passive tick, and I'm getting passive tick right now, actually, because of opening with the second command vehicle, well, command infantry into Charlie. So I think it's a bit of rock, paper, scissors sometimes. You have the, the mech rush strategy, which works against a two-point overcommit. You have a two-point strategy, which tends to work against a Bravo overcommit, and things like that. So on this side, we have an M2A2 Bradley, a couple other things moving up, and I have Falsham Jaeger that are headed into Delta sort of on their own. The rest of my stuff is mechanized. It's coming up here in a column. We have an automatic, a leopard, some other infantry, and this at the time was a little bit annoying. So What's happening right now with my hot twos are I'm getting line of sight trolled by the forest here and by the buildings. Um, so I don't think I actually even landed a single one until just now. Really no major damage off the hots. I probably should have turned them off and waited for a better shot because there was an M8 AGS, there were Bradleys up here, lots of things I would have liked to kill with the Tiger and really just didn't. Um, the other reason that I particularly like this matchup is the Tiger versus the Longbow. They're very different but they're both sort of key parts of their respective decks. Now, what you see I've done here, the Leopard 2A4 moving up to this spot, this spot is incredibly deadly, like incredibly deadly. You can see down, well, with proper recon, which is hopefully getting there pretty soon, you can see into this road feeding reinforcements in, and the 2A4 will just take pot shots at things in there all day. That's sort of my hope. And meanwhile, I don't think there's been as much movement in Bravo Fox as there should have been. If we take a look at Yu's deployment here, he has me outgunned by a lot in Foxtrot. There's an M1 IP Abrams here, there's light riflemen, rangers, more riflemen, more rangers, and he has a lot of stuff in Bravo. Now, the Stinger teams I like, the light riflemen I do like, uh, everything like that, and we will see some movement here in a bit, but it just becomes a bit of, I think he committed enough to everything that he didn't feel comfortable pushing, and also probably didn't feel that comfortable defending. Now, this is good. Pushing with the rangers here, if you suspect that your opponent just has an ATGM team and maybe some cheap recon in this section of town, these rangers can definitely get some good work done, kill my Milan team, and keep moving forward, which is irritating to say the least. And while that stuff was going on, I had a bit of a lapse in micro, so my M113Gs should have been dumping their infantry, and, well, the Dragoner can kill an M2A2, it really doesn't have the heaviest armor, 5 frontal armor, We'll keep you safe, but Dragoner have 20 RPM on an admittedly low armor-piercing law. A couple of shots, a couple of hits, we'll get that done. But I'm also pushing up the Fallschirmjäger and the Leopard 2A4 shooting in, and with that in the automatic, I felt pretty secure in my opponent's two-pointer, which is, this is catastrophic, right? So at this point, Yu has to either push me in Echo completely, and well, even if he does push in Bravo, he also has to push in Echo in order to make this balance, or he has to drive me out of Delta. That's really how this is going to even out. And you know, 74 points to zero. Oftentimes I find, yeah, it does make your opener weaker to put the second command vehicle in something like Charlie, but it also forces your opponent to panic. So uh, you bought a CV pretty much first buy, or if not first buy, pretty close to it. And that stopped my tick. But because of that, we've both had that early investment, granted his wasn't as early, into command, and I'm up 74 points, which doesn't sound like a lot until you think about, you know, that's five minutes of plus one tick. 
So it was two and a half minutes of plus two tick. Here's the M1 IP though, and this guy does a really good job. His M1 IP was amazing in this game, much to my chagrin. Uh, assault automatic, by the way. There's a reason people call this anti-everything. I just kind of moved over. We actually got fired at by the light rifleman, but the automatic stunned the light rifleman, and because their secondary is guided, the second you make the light rifleman stun, it's basically like an ATGM team. They just lose all their tracking, and it doesn't really do all that much. But a raven, nice buy from my opponent, and my micro is a little bit lapsed there on the automatic's gun. I was using him to clear things out, and We'll see actually this Raven does pretty well too. I kind of struggle with that. My automatic right now is off, but particularly with things like the Raven that have really long range, uh, I tend not to always see the plane coming, so it can be a little bit annoying. And right now I'm just thinking to myself, you know, we got some Martyr 2s, we got some Pigran headed that way, I'm establishing myself in Delta, and we're also going to pressure them in Bravo just because I don't want to lose that completely and I want to force my opponent to keep buying for Bravo. I'd rather fight him here <clears throat> than in Delta because once I get a cap in Delta, well, I don't really want him pushing me out of that. That's my win condition, basically, right now. So if I am pushing in other fronts like Bravo, like Echo into Foxtrot, that might be a particularly impactful thing. And here we see the Leopard 2A4 <clears throat> not really landing a bunch of shots, but, I mean, it certainly will... My 2A4 is missed so much, man. I, I, I know they have good accuracy. 65% is pretty nice. I don't know if it's just confirmation bias, but even with veterancy, even with range scaling, 80% shots, I feel like I... I've missed three in a row before, uh, even recently, and I get that it, you know, it's point two to the third does happen from time to time, uh, but it shouldn't be as often as I feel like I see it. Which it might just be those are the ones that you notice, right? You don't notice it if your tanks are doing their job. You notice it when they're not and things are still alive. So the M1 IP has pushed out my M41A1s, but they're pretty cheap. We're getting more of them, just M41s everywhere. And in the meantime, a couple of Live Garden, a Leopard 2A4, and there's really not that much that you can do to hold this. Um, in particular, if he has ATGMs or Light Riflemen on that side, they're not really in the proper position to handle the 2A4. And I also, I also am splitting his attention here. We have Dragoner that have been moving through, and yeah, I mean, they might lose to Riflemen and a box if they don't have any laws left, but I think most of the Dragoner got pretty good return, and right now they're also just buying time, pushing this position back. That was an M1A1 Abrams, and that right there is the most important unit that we've spotted on that side all game, because I have to handle it carefully, or it'll just bolt through basically everything I have on that side. I mean, I guess the 2A4 is a decent match for it, but it's not one that I'd want to take a 50-50 sort of thing. I need to approach that engagement carefully. Here comes the Raven. My automatic got a couple more shots in. It then did die, so yeah, a little bit sad there. And this particularly was one of those where often when you play people higher ranks, and granted Captain and Major are right next to each other, you have these moments of, oh man, I wish I was just that little bit of an inch better about certain aspects of my gameplay. My base effort is on. Usually it's not a huge deal on maps that are deeper uh, and against seed planes that don't have that range, but that Raven just, I mean, two automatics and a Gepard. Pretty nice for him, not for me. So at this point I bought another 2A4, really been enjoying these guys lately, especially compared to 2A1s that I feel can be a little bit anemic for the point cost sometimes, and that right there is a longbow. So that ripple fire is just, it's a telltale sign, right? So as soon as I saw that, the Leopard 2A4 is moving back even before we see that the longbow, well, even before we see its name, right? Because that thing ripple fires and my 2A4 is dead. That's just how that's going to go. So on this side, I figure, you know, if he has a longbow over here and it looks like he's starting to push over here into Echo, now's the time to take advantage of it if I have anything and the Pigren can and the Falsherm can. If I have anything that can kill that tank in close combat, I may as well go for it. Plus, we have the Lynx offloading command infantry headed for Delta pretty soon, and we'll restart that plus two tick unless there are caps in Bravo Foxtrot, which I don't think was really the mood right now for my opponent. He also bought a Sea Eagle. So he's definitely trying to bully me in the air, right? And this, this, this really hurt. KWS and the CF-104. I like to leave the CF-104 just to distract, but I mean, the Sea Eagle dodged so much. It's upvetted, it has a lot of really good veterancy. And the CF-104 nearly gets it, but that thing gets out at one strength. And that right there, I mean, if you look on the Reddit and you look at things like this, uh, Wargame Reddit, um, they'll often say Air Superiority Fighter versus Air Superiority Fighter is basically two players deciding to flip a coin. And that coin flip, I lost. But it was a coin flip that wasn't 50-50, it was weighted in my opponent's direction, because his Sea Eagle, particularly at Upvet, is probably better than the KWS. Uh, I think that's that's fair to say. So, I was hoping to pick up a couple points by killing him there, and instead I lost some air cover. And I lost that against a USA deck, which has a Nighthawk potentially, we've already seen the Raven come out. Um, there's a potential now for the Major uh, to really just punish me here, 
pretty hard in the air and not really have all that much that I can do about it, short of buying more things like automatics that then are weak to the raven. So on this side, I should have probably been smoking here, but I didn't have a mortar around this side. I got uh, sidetracked fighting in the middle of the map. And just seeing these Pigren and Dragoner move up, my opponent's pulling back his M1A1. This is the right response. You don't want that thing to be within range of Panzerfaust 3s. They're only 10 rounds per minute, but with 24 AP power, you don't really need all that many shots. So I was thinking to myself, okay, how do I get around this? And, well, the answer that came to mind is the Tiger. We're going to go up, around, and try to catch that M1A1 in the open. We'll see if it works. Uh, it's a little risky if there was not a lot of air defense over here, but I didn't think there was. I actually killed some of his air defense earlier while I was showing you something over here on the right, and this push kind of confused me. So I've lost my Milan 2, <clears throat> but we've killed a fair amount of Rifleman 90, and at 15 points, those guys are not completely expendable, right? That cost will add up, and the AT4 that you're paying for there really hasn't been useful. He's using them kind of like reservists, which, while it is effective, it's more effective with 5-point reservists than it is with 15-point lines. So H1J Cobra, and this was pretty scary. I'm trying to get my Panzer gun out of here. We've already taken a little bit of a beating, and this is where the Tiger goes. Okay, we're going in right now, because the Tiger has stingers. The Cobra has no air-to-air -air capabilities, even with the M75 frag. I mean, has its primary. Yeah, nothing air-to-air. And, and the Tiger even has Hot 2s for air to ground. So we do take that guy down, and then not seeing any sort of uh, air defense over on this side, we're just going to be pushing forward. Then we have a Tiger, Martyr 2 is coming up. That could be really, really deadly. And as soon as he sees he's getting flanked, that A1, Abrams, A1 Abrams is pulling out again. Tiger, side shot, boom. So with that kill, I was pretty much thinking, okay, now we lock this down. We push the Dragoner, we push the Falls, we push the Martyr 2s, we're trying to kill a command tank or command infantry or whatever it is he has over there in Delta because with the death of the M1A1, the death of a lot of riflemen previously as well, I doubt he has that much invested. We have an F, uh, we have a Sea Eagle in the air, we have a Raven in the air, we have a Longbow over on this side, we have the M1IP Abrams, just counting my opponent's points, trying to get a mental image of the economy of this game so far. It seemed like the two-pointer was pretty light. Now that was a Chaparral, and that is going to make me withdraw the Tiger. So. I came in, got the missile away, and then because of the shot all moving up, we're just like, okay, sure, we got our value, we killed a Cobra, we killed an M1A1, let's just play it safe with the Tiger, make sure we have it when we need it, instead of throwing it away when we don't. Uh, yeah, 2A4, yeah, uh, I guess we got a hit in. I always forget the M1IP has 17 frontal armor, which is pretty serious for an 80 point tank. It just suffers in the gun, but <clears throat> if you're using against infantry, it really doesn't matter all that much. So, CF-104 is just circling over here to dissuade any sort of helicopter or things like that. And, I mean, at this point, I think this looks pretty good. You can see uh, we only have about a minute and a half left in the game. And I think that many people will surrender once you clear their two-pointer, um, especially if it's sort of ambiguous in other sections of the game. And then this is pretty brutal. So the CF-104 is a strictly worse version of a Dutch version of the same unit, which for some reason gets 10% better ECM. I didn't actually realize that until recently, so thank you, uh, Mint Jelly Man, for pointing that out to me now that it's going to irritate me every time I buy this unit. But it is pretty slow and has very high accuracy air to air missiles. So the entire purpose of this thing for me is to fly out in front of ASFs to allow my KWS to kill, which this time kind of failed, and also to be a really cheap helo hunter. So 60 points, and we're just going for the, the longbow. So, you know, 8 strength, evac ordered, yeah, got a little bit misdirected there, but. We chase down some, oh jeez, look at that. 60 point air superiority fighter, down goes the Raven between that and the Tornado ECR, which picked up a radar kill as well. So I don't know, that was the first of the sort of last really impactful plays in this game. And then whenever you're going against Landjet, you have to be careful of a couple of things. And one of those is Martyr 2s. We have the DAP over here, Martyr 2s. And these guys will shred helicopters quicker than you even thought possible. I've really been enjoying Landjet. It's like, it's a rarity for me that I play a deck and I think to myself, man, I want to build two or three or four different versions of this and actually keep them all and maybe play them on different maps and, and sort of experiment with it. Usually I play one and then I play a different one. And man, I really, if you haven't tried Landjut, give it a shot. It has some really fun tools, some really powerful options. Here's the CF-104. We're looking for the longbow. One missile. Second missile. Yep. And we didn't even need it because the gun got the kill. And with that, that is going to be a game as we kill the CV and Delta. Flip to a plus three and my opponent surrenders. So, highlight units. The Tiger did pretty well. M1A1 Abrams, Cobra, uh, assorted things. The opener really could have been better with that if I had microed it better, kept the hot twos to when they would have been useful. 
Uh, other than that, Falsham Jaeger 90 always perform very well if you keep them alive, and I wish I hadn't lost the automatics, but we kind of made up for it with high performance of things like the CF-104 killing a longbow, the other one killing a raven, and the Martyr 2s really pulling their weight. So that's all we've got for you guys. Thank you all for hanging around, and we'll see you again real soon.